This is the story of the week for me, this. Imagine being Professor Niku. Professor Niku is an astrophysicist at Cambridge University. Picture the scene. Professor Niku is quietly studying the data gathered on yet another exoplanet, discovered some unfathomably far distance away from Earth. And as Professor Niku stares at the data of yet another exoplanet in yet another solar system, they notice something. This is where the suspenseful music would come in during the Netflix episode of this discovery. The professor stares harder at the data. It can't be, he says. Is it life? The James Webb Space Telescope is set to turn its gaze towards a distant planet, K218b in another solar system, to investigate one of the most tantalizing hints of alien life ever discovered. This, folks, could be it. And our protagonist, the scientist who may have discovered life out there in the universe, is Professor Niku Madus Madusudan, Professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge, who joins me live. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme. Um, Right, we've, we, I think we've got, the de we've got the deeds to your life story sewn up here. We, we now own the rights to this. Um, tell us where and when you found this. So last year, uh, we had uh, some JWST observations with the James Webb Space Telescope of this planet, uh, its atmosphere, and we detected for the first time ever carbon-bearing molecules like methane and CO2 uh, in its atmosphere and did not detect other molecules like ammonia, which said that it should it's likely to have an ocean uh, underneath the atmosphere. But we also saw a tentative sign of this molecule dimethyl sulfide, which we weren't sure, but still, even the very possibility of it being there is enormous. So this is, this is dimethyl sulfide? Yeah. That's, that's the important gas. And why is that gas yeah. so important? It's important because uh, on Earth, it is produced only from life, uh, only um, mainly from microorganisms in the Earth's oceans. And it has been uh, known to be a robust biomarker if detected in planetary environments. And it had been predicted uh, to be so. And we had been looking for it. And, and that's why it's super important. How much of it is there? Can you tell? So we are not 100% sure yet. It could be anywhere of the order of a part per million. Um, so Is that a lot? But, but it's a lot for that particular gas. On, right. on Earth, it would be like significantly lower than that. Oh, really? So on, we actually have lower amounts of dimethyl sulfide on Earth than could be present on this particular planet. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Um, and what I love is your description, as I've read it, Professor, in one of the newspapers today, of when you found this, when you realized that the, the, this gas might be present there. So talk, talk us through that. No, it's, it's a profound activity, this uh, search for biomarkers elsewhere, because the ramifications to society are enormous. So even if we detect the molecule, uh, we have to be really, really sure that it's there. And we have to be really sure it's from life uh, on another planet. There are many false positives that can happen. Uh, but the prospect of that being there has enormous ramifications because the search for life elsewhere has been one of the uh, longest standing uh, quest of of our species, of humankind. Uh, so if this is when it's going to come true finally, that's a momentous occasion and we don't take it lightly. So w I, I read that you couldn't sleep for a week. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, so for, for a week, because it, it, it hits you hard when, when uh, you see the possibility of such a big, uh, big discovery. It, it, for, a, for a scientist, um, it's, it's quite enormous. This planet is quite big as well, isn't it? Is, is it two and a half times the size of Earth, something like that? That's correct, yes. Yeah. And you think that because this gas exists, the presence of water is there, oceans are there, and therefore the life that would be giving off this gas will be residing somewhere on some uh, faraway planet's ocean floor. Yeah, the evidence for the oceans comes from other gases that we have actually detected robustly, the methane and carbon dioxide, and we did not detect ammonia. That combination tells us that it's very, it very likely has an ocean. We need more observations to confirm that, but, but the ocean narrative is very much possible. And then if we detect this gas, it, you put all of these uh, components together, says that you know, there, are, there could be microorganisms on an ocean world elsewhere. Dumb question, Professor. So you make this discovery, you see this in the data, you think, oh my God, who do you ring? Who do you tell? How do you, how do you, so what, 
what chain is there to make get this to the top of the chain to say, guys, I think I've discovered life? Well, it took me about a week to muster the courage to even think that that's anywhere close to real and break it to my own group, my own students <laughs> working with me. So, so you don't drink anyone, you're just shell-shocked for a while. And then we slowly all come together and work on it for many more months uh, before, uh, weeks and months before we robustly establish it and then you, you publish it and so on. And to the extent that the James Webb telescope is what, as we speak, looking at this particular exoplanet K218b to see what images it can get of it. Yeah, it just happened this morning, actually. So so it has already done it uh, early this morning. Uh, so we have the observations. They're beaming um, uh, in right now. Uh, so we're waiting for the data to come to us. And the analysis will start anytime now. Wow. So you could. how long is it going to take to fully analyze this? So, so we will obviously take our time to do very careful analysis. So it's going to be months before uh, we can say anything uh, for sure. What do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. Wow, that high? I, I, yeah, I mean, that's purely going by what the data has been telling us in the past and what, uh, what we know from theory. Uh, it it could be fifty fifty. It is very high, I know, uh, but but that's that's what the is, data says. Is. Again, dumb question, but I think you know context matters here. Is that have there been other situations, other discoveries where they've said, right, we think this is fifty fifty. We think this is about as close as we've ever been to discovering it. Not on an exoplanet, never. Not a planet outside the solar system. That's incredible. I think, Professor, you, you are a couple of months away from being perhaps the most famous person in the world. Well, um, I mean, I would like to find what the truth is and I will leave it there. Um, and that, that's my number one duty here. Um, and, and we'll see how it turns out. Well, listen, as and when you've got the information in, as and when you think you're, you're ready to go, could one of the calls please be to us just so we can have first dibs on telling the world that we've that you've discovered life out there? So I, I, I will say that it won't come so easy in the sense that we won't get a detection of life with one other observation. It'll probably take us closer to truth and then that'll set off uh, in motion a number of other studies, theoretical and observational. And you know, like, like all uh, good science, uh, it'll be gradual. It'll not be like an immediate, um, immediate result. But every step that takes us closer to truth is a huge step forward, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So maybe not this observation, uh, an ironclad result, but maybe in a few, maybe, I don't know, maybe in a month, in a few months, maybe in a year, it, it could come anytime. Well, you're not going to get much sleep, I think. It, it, I hope it comes sooner rather than later, because you're going to need to get some kip. Because um, having, be, being, having those sleepless nights for a year is going to be a problem. Yeah, so we are used to these operations uh, at the, the cutting edge, so I think we'll survive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic to talk to you. Congratulations to you and your team. Absolutely fascinating. Professor Niku Madhusudan, Professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge, who is leading this study into this planet, K218b. It is a, an exoplanet in orbit around a red dwarf star called K218. If you wanted it to be belt and braces, I mean, that is... Come on. Imagine that. Put the radio on one afternoon. You're listening to this bloke wittering on. And the, the show stops and you go, just going to break the news to you. Do you remember that guy that we spoke to a couple of months back? The, the, the Cambridge side. He's done it. He's found life. out. We found life, our proper life. Not your little tiddly billy bits, but, the, you know, proper, proper life in the universe. Wow. Incredible.